Hello everyone! This is where we left off last time with our landscape illustration tutorial. So let's continue! Okay, so what are we gonna do next? I think that we can give those back hills a little bit of forest as we see here. So for the furthest back hill the forest is going to be very suggested. Right now if you remember the shadow and the hill are grouped together and to go inside this group and work inside this group and modify the objects within this group I'm going to double click on it and now we have we can work with this without being bothered by all the other layers. I'm going to get closer Grab the pen to again and just so this part here is invisible we can't see it from the outside because there is a hill in front so we're only going to worry about the visible part up here I'm going to just go and make make a little triangular shapes like this maybe give some space in between and this will represent the sort of the tops of the trees on this hill or a mountain or whatever. If you look on this for example you can see that those hills far back there you can recognize that they are covered in forest. This They have this tiny little sort of teeth like texture. So that's what we are making. I'm trying to variate them a little bit so it looks natural. Now when I reach the top of the hill I'm gonna go into the shadow and since the cover there is different I'm going to end this shape here and go back down and close it and go for eye the eyedropper tool and select the same cover so now this shape this little forest up here appears to be part of the hill shape again always adjust those shapes a little bit but they're so tiny so let's not get so caught up in details although it's very tempting <laughs> I must admit and let's continue the forest on this side I think it's good to remember that those are trees and they will always grow straight up some of my shapes here you can see that they're sloping in a bit of a um, unnatural way but again even with something simple like that we can play all day and make it look as refined as possible but sometimes we also have to ask ourselves the question is it really worth it is it really going to make the end product better and sometimes the answer is no like that let's first select this shadowy forest we're going to control C and control F to duplicate and copy paste the same shape shape on top of itself we're going to need two copies then click away click on the top shape hold down shift select this forest on this other side and also the hill and we're going to make all of this one shape with the unite function here in the pathfinder so now the forest or the trees they're part of the hill we're going to control shift left square bracket send that to the back and now we're going to do the same with this bit of the forest the second copy and the shadow we lost the style of the shadow because we had an unstyled shape on top but this is no problem because we can always go to the eyedropper tool again and copy it from behind from one of the other similar shapes uh, shape styles and now it's here so yeah now it's done if you wonder why we needed to do this it's because if I have kept things as they were they wouldn't have been problem on this side but in this side since we have reduced opacity here in the shadow we would have gotten some kind of weird weird thing like this where you can see that something isn't right because there is a different opacity anyway now now it all fits together and it's all fine okay let's go back see now the contrast here isn't great 
But remember, we are going to work with the covers again later on, so not to worry about it. But you can see that it adds a nice bit of detail. Maybe I would say the detail is a bit harsh because in reality those trees probably have to be giant if we see so much of them. But let's not go too deep into details, okay? We can always go back and, you know, using the direct selection tool manually readjust those a little bit, make them smaller, bigger, whatever they need to be, but it's fine. Now for the next hill, this one. Oh, I forgot to group those together, the shadow and the hill. Gonna do it now, like this. Now here we're going to see the forest a little bit closer, sort of like maybe this forest so you see a little bit more detail and for this I would use those trees the, the ones that we made the first time and I have prepared here some more done in the very same way as those ones let's let's also use these going to copy them. I just select them and hold down Alt while dragging so I get a copy. Right now they're all a little too big. So I'm gonna select all of them, hold down Shift to preserve dimensions and scale them down, make them smaller. Maybe something like this should be a good size. And now let's again select all of them. Control and X to cut. Let's go inside this group. Control V to paste them. And we're going to arrange them on this hill. Create a little <coughs> a little forest. Once you run out of trees, you can start to grab some of the previous ones and copy paste them. You just select the one you like, you hold down Alt, you drag and there is your copy. You can variate the size of the copy so that it's not super obvious that it's a copy. Alright, there is now forest on this hill. Now we need to fix the covers. Wait, let's adjust a little bit. So, these two we can unite, give them the same cover as the hill, and all the rest we unite as well, and we give the same cover as the shadow. But here we run into the problem that I told you about. Now it looks like we have this ghost forest on top of the hill. To fix that, we select the ghost forest, we control C, then control F to copy paste the same shape on top of it. And this time we give it the cover of the hill and send it behind with control shift left square bracket. And now we still have a bit of a problem here because we have the shadow forest and the shadow overlapping each other and since they have very low opacity where, where they overlap you see this darker color. To fix that we select the forest, select the shadow and unite them and there it is. Now it's all fine. And we get all of this selection or group more like. And now we have this hill with the forest on top of it and it's it's looking nice. Now what do we do with this hill here? We are going to place some spruce trees on top of it but before that I'm actually thinking that we can give it a bit of a shadow as well. Let's say maybe maybe something like that. Since it's closer we start to see a bit more detail so Let's go with that for now. 
we're going to group it again, move this one to the front. Now, we already have the tree for that. We made it a few weeks ago, this one. And I also have some more here that I've made with the same technique. And uh, let's see, maybe we use some of that as well. Yeah, let's use this one, for example. See how it looks. This one is interesting, I think, because it has few branches and some dry branches. It's nice as a silhouette. Um, maybe let's use the one we made together as well. We, oh, it's actually right now on a different layer. So we have to cut and paste it on the layer that we're working on. Like this. Give it a bit of a tilt for a bit of more natural look. Maybe make it smaller. Again, don't worry about the covers, we are going to fix all that later on. Yeah, something like that. And here we are going to put this pine tree. Let's use the one we made last week. Again, it's on a different layer, so we need to bring it to the one that we are working on, make it bigger. Yeah, the covers are really messed up right now, but we're going to fix that. So this is the foreground, so everything in the foreground will be big. Like that. I think it's forming out really nicely. I think I feel like there must be one more tree there. Maybe this one. Hmm. I feel like we have a bit too much going on right here now. Let's remove those two again. And now it looks empty. So yeah, actually part of the process is kind of playing around and moving stuff and seeing what work what works and what doesn't. Maybe this one is actually down here. I'm not sure. Well, we can think about this when we start working with covers. We no longer need this uh, sketch, so I'm just going to just delete this layer altogether. Yeah, I think the composition is nice, so I'm thinking since this is the foreground, we can add a little, a little bit more detail. Oh, and before I forget, uh, let's add those two trees to the group of this hill. I'm going to just cut and paste them inside. To cut, I control an X and to paste, I control an F. If you control V, it's going to place them in some random place. When you control F, it places them on the exact same spot where you lifted them from. So that's convenient. And I'm going to group these two as well. And this will be all for today. Make sure to come back next time to continue creating this illustration with me. Be sure to like and subscribe and leave me a comment if you have any questions or just want to let me know what you think. See you next time. Have fun!